Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix Mainframe channel. This is Moshix. Before I started to do any professional programming, before I approached mainframes for the first time, when I was doing any programming at home, which was about 16 hours a day, I was working with something like this. This were the editors that I was familiar with and all I knew was some assembler programming and on the Z80 and the 6502, as you can see here, and, uh, and with BASIC and uh, San Pascal. This is the extent of the programming that I was doing. And as you can see from the editor here, uh, this was, um, well, if this is all you knew, it was okay. It was even great. But then when I uh, switched to working on the mainframe, when I uh, was in the military, I saw a completely new thing and the whole new world opened up to me. So you can imagine my surprise and great joy when suddenly at work I could, I was facing something like this. I could just go anywhere in the screen and, uh, and, uh, and fix things and, uh, and just do full screen editing. So this was truly great uh, for me. And, um, and uh, it was a whole new world. And uh, I spent um, many thousands of hours working with this great editor called ISPF. And from the moment I met ISPF and I met uh, full screen editing and line commands, I uh, I've been loving this editor ever since. So in this video, we're going to uh, play with ISPF and show you some of the, not even advanced features, but some of the medium advanced features that make this editor so great and why it's still my favorite editor for uh, editing programs on the mainframe. And that's above and beyond um, all the new ways to edit. Um, uh, mainframe code such as uh, Zoe and all the other stuff that's possible and I've shown in this video uh, workflows where you could edit uh, mainframe code um, on uh, Vim which is my second favorite editor um, and uh, and then send it to mainframe to the mainframe for processing so even that is possible so I can combine actually my two most loved editors and uh, on the mainframe but uh, working on the mainframe with ISPF is still a great joy for me every single time I do it, many years or even decades later after I first saw ISPF. And I should also say ISPF has, uh, has progressed immensely since the time I saw it. What I'm showing you here today is ISPF as I worked on it uh, back in the days. That's the ISPF that comes with MBS XA from 1982. So we're going to be I'm going to be showing you today on this video how to work with ISPF from 1982. And since then, obviously, IBM has added uh, I would say probably hundreds, if not feet, thousands of features to ISPF. One of the things that uh, th uh, this channel actually allowed me to do is get in touch with some of the people who created the software that I'm using in this channel. So uh, a couple of months ago, the person at IBM who's since retired, who uh, added the color support to ISPF, to this very version of ISPF I'm using, uh, contacted me and showed me and told me how he went to add uh, color support for languages. So you could do highlight uh, JCL, which as you can see here is not uh, supported in uh, in this version of uh, of ISPF from 1982, but uh, it, it took this exact version and with some assembler and some other um, uh, coding, he added highlighting support for uh, JCL and COBOL and I guess PL1. So let me show you uh, why I love ISPF so much. So let me show you an example. I'm working here with ISPF from 1982, as mentioned before. Um, so this is before um, color coding of, uh, of uh, syntax for JCL and uh, COBOL and assembler and all that stuff. So we were working with a, um, with a 40, 40, 42 year old uh, version of the editor, but that's exactly the editor I was working with, with uh, professionally back then. So um, I have an example where I want to, um, I would like to import some files from tape and let's say um, 
that I need um, something like this and then I want to number the files from you know I have 120 files so I want to go from 0, 0, 01 to 0, 0120 um, now so that's what I would like in the end but 120 lines of those uh, number correctly so how would I go doing that about doing that um, well in Vim um, I would know how to do it uh, quite easily and I'll show it maybe at the at the end of this uh, ISPF example because uh, Vim is by definition a much more interactive uh, um, uh, program because it talks to the operating system every time you press a key but remember this is a 3270 terminal and uh, the operating system only knows what you've done every time you press the enter key not when when I'm when I'm typing things so how would we do this so um, so we have a new some JCL here um, as you can see here some JCL and I say um, number COBOL so we now we do COBOL numbering which has its own very particular numbering of uh, lines and cards and then uh, we insert a line and I make this blank so I can repeat it uh, 190 times so now we have from zero all the way to 120 lines and um, now um, we can say um, uh, number no cobol and so now we have numbers here that go from zero as you can see here all the way down to 0, 11, 12, etc., all the way down to 120. But we don't need the trailing to uh, zeros. Um, so to fix that, we would do something like bounds. Um, let me see. 1, 2, 3. Okay, bounds uh, 5. And um, then the first line will say. Um, shift right um, 99 positions Oops. and we put in a blank after so that it understands that the number that was here before is not part of the command and then we go all the way down and the same thing again okay so now we have from 0 all the way to 120 And now uh, we remove the bounds, so we have the full line again. And um, we now uh, insert a new line, and we with the JCL that we want. So copy one file, uh, exec tape one file, and the file number. Now we want to know at what position we need to put those numbers below. What, it, what position is this? So we have the columns command, which shows us the, the, what the positions are of each character. And now we need to shift all of those um, to the right. So we do something like and we go down okay so now we have all the numbers in the right place and now we just need to move this copy this line over all the others and that's easily done with move and then we say over and we put in here 999 uh, so this means move this line over the over the next uh, 999 lines and that's it so uh, <laughs> uh, we have now uh, created the JCL lines that we need and of course um, we can now um, insert the job card if we had one uh, tape job um, files something like this 
right? So um, that's easily done. Um, and as you've seen also from my many videos on this channel of uh, things like hiding some uh, lines is easily done. So we just uh, hit 12 lines now. Um, we can reset so we see all the lines again and many other you can do copy and paste obviously uh, and that's without uh, control keys and without the mouse and so this was when i f saw this and i saw hundreds of people were working like this as if this was the normal way to edit files coming from uh, 8-bit home computers this was uh, unbelievable for me at the time i was extremely young as you can imagine and um and uh, this was just uh, amazing for me. And uh, ever since then, I've loved JCL. Uh, I've loved uh, I, the ISPF editor because it's so versatile. And this is an old version. Can you imagine all the hundreds or maybe thousands of new features that have been added since? Now, let's assume that I want to do the same thing with uh, VI or with Vim. How would I do this? Well, so if I had to do this with Vim, as you can see, I'm on a on a terminal here, um, on a on a Unix terminal. So I would do something like uh, tape JCL and make this a little bit bigger. So then I would first I would create the numbers. So uh, I would say put um, and uh, range one to one to 120 and so now i would have the numbers here and now what i would do is i would just select all of this text all the way down to 120 and say um, copy one file exec tape one file And so that's how I would do it. Obviously, as you can see here, um, I don't have the numbering without the leading zeros. So mainframe is always very good at formatting uh, stuff on uh, data. Very, very good at it. I could, of course, also um, do the uh, numbering so I could have the zeros. That's also possible. So you could say it, it sounds like it's a bit easier on uh, Vim, and maybe it is. But um, if you compare this with uh, the way we did it on the mainframe, once you know those commands, uh, it's extremely simple. And um, remember that I only uh, sent work to the mainframe when I was ready to send it. Here, every keystroke, every time we scroll, when I do it like this, when I scroll, this is all handled by the operating system, by the host. So it sends uh, lots of interrupts. Now, when you have uh, a mainframe with uh, 3,000 or 4,000 users, if every keystroke would send interrupts, uh, you can imagine how uh, busy the uh, machine would be with that. Whereas here, um, you know, whereas on the mainframe, you only get it when people are ready to send work. In a way, it's kind of similar like the web. The, with, with a browser, you only really send work to the uh, server whenever you uh, you uh, send uh, press the key to update or whatever. So it, the, it you know it's come around again. But um, so for me the you know this is fine. Vim is great and I love it and I use it every single day. But ISPF is still the one uh, editor that I still like because it's so versatile and so powerful but also because coming from 8-bit uh, computers and editing on 8-bit computers it seemed such a huge uh, amazing progress for me that it just made such a huge impression and i still love ispf because of that to this day i just love the versatility you have with uh with ispf because you can control the scrolling amount you can set it on page you can set it on half uh, which is what I typically had it back then. And remember, when I'm saying 1982, I was programming on a on a real terminal, on a on a real uh, iron terminal, and um, without colors. It was just green. So this would have been the kind of terminal that I worked on. There was only green. There was no nothing else. There was later on. I got a terminal that could highlight certain lines more than others, as. Uh, 
but uh, before that you just had to point with the finger to highlight a line <laughs> so this for me was already is already a huge improvement because i have colors and it's beautiful it's the resolution is great you just saw how this looked before it was slow it was clunky um you could you could always hear i was in an office with uh, a bunch of other uh, programmers and you could almost tell if they were doing jcl or if they were doing pl1 or assembler from the clicking patterns that you could hear uh, probably 30 40 feet away uh, and when it was like 10 o'clock in the morning and everybody was very busy doing their work it was a clack 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 like the whole office uh, because those were those model f uh, keyboards uh, it was very uh, clicky and you could hear the whole office being very busy and sometimes the uh, officer will come in and just uh, look around and just basically listen in to see how busy people were just from the clicking sound uh, and all of that of course has disappeared today uh, we don't have 30 people in one office anymore and uh, you have cubicles if at all and most people just the developers nowadays uh, work from home things have changed but i still like uh, I still like my ISPF editor. I also like the X-Edit ed ex edit editor on VM quite a lot, but ISPF for me is number one. VI would be second if I had to work with mainframe st stuff. And I have tried all the other editors such as the, uh, uh, what is it called, the VS, um, the VS code editor from Microsoft and they're fine and I'm sure you can do all this this stuff very easily too I'm not saying you can't do it uh, it's just that I like this and um, 